So now we're ready to talk about the idea of dynamic chemical equilibrium. This reaction, oh, which is actually, no, I guess it's okay. I was expecting there to be an arrow here as well. We've got hydrogen and iodine reacting to form hydrogen iodide. But this arrow is different than the ones we've looked at before. This arrow is pointing in both ways, in both directions. That indicates a reversible reaction. A reversible reaction can proceed in both the forward and the reverse directions. So we can have hydrogen reacting with iodine to form hydrogen iodide, but we could also have two hydrogen iodide molecules bumping into each other with enough energy and coming apart back into hydrogen and iodine. Not all chemical reactions are reversible, but many of them are. It can go in both directions. So when the rate of the forward reaction equals the rate of the reverse reaction, we say we've achieved a dynamic equilibrium. There's reaction occurring in the forward direction and in the reverse reaction, in the reverse direction, but at the same rates. When that happens, the concentration of reactants doesn't change anymore. Because as it's being depleted into products, products are also reacting to form those reactants. It's going in both directions. And so the concentrations are going to be the same. Like the number of people in the airport is relatively constant throughout the day, even though people are coming and people are going. That's the forward and reverse reaction. These guys are reacting to form this, but this is also reacting to form that. The reactants and products are depleted at the same rate at which they are formed. Does that make sense? You okay with that? So let's look at this illustration. So here in box A, this is time zero. We're starting off with eight hydrogen molecules, eight iodine molecules, and no hydrogen iodide molecules. So these guys are moving around, and there will be collisions between the hydrogen and the iodide, and they will form hydrogen iodide. So after about 15 seconds, now some of the hydrogen and iodine have reacted. There's six of these left and six of those left. They started with eight. And some of the HI has formed. So the concentration of hydrogen and iodine has gone down which lowers the rate of that reaction. It started out high, and it's going to get lower. Is there any of the reverse reaction happening in the first panel? Is there any hydrogen iodide reacting to form hydrogen and iodine? It can't. There's no hydrogen iodide there. So the reverse reaction here is zero. Down here, now we have some hydrogen iodide present. So now there is some reverse reaction. The reverse reaction is going to increase in rate as the forward reaction progresses because we're going to get more of the HI present. Eventually, we're going to come to a point where the rate of the forward reaction is equal to the rate of the reverse reaction. So now we've got four hydrogen iodides I'm sorry, four hydrogens and four iodines. We've got eight hydrogen iodide molecules. And there is still reaction occurring. There's collisions. There's things reacting in the forward way and in the reverse way. But the rate of those reactions is equal. And so here at 30 seconds, this is the composition. At 45 seconds, it's the same composition. But some of the hydrogen iodide hydrogen molecules here are now part of the hydrogen iodide down there. That's a dynamic equilibrium.
there's a population analogy. I like this. It's like a combination of, of two different fantasies, right? So there's Narnia and there's Middle Earth. And if initially there's a high population of people in Narnia and very few people in Middle Earth, the uh, rate of immigration to Middle Earth is going to be large and there's not going to be any immigration from Middle Earth to Narnia because there's nobody there to move out, right? You can't have people moving out if there's nobody there. The people in Narnia are moving to Middle Earth because they see opportunity. Hey, there's just this vast open land. We can go over there and have a farm, right? And so it's just getting crowded over here. So they start moving that way. Well, as people move over there and the population of Middle Earth increases, the population of Narnia decreases, the rate of immigration from Narnia to Middle Earth is going to go down. And the rate of immigration from Middle Earth to Narnia is going to increase because some of these people are going to go over there and they're like, you know, this wasn't such a great idea. I think it was better back where we were to start with. And so they start moving back. But it will come to an equilibrium where the number of people moving from Narnia to Middle Earth in a given period of time is the same as the number of people moving in the opposite direction. And that's a dynamic equilibrium. There's people coming and people going, but the number in each place is the same. Does that make sense? We're going to watch a movie. <laughs>